This video is a step-by-step -step breakdown of how I got my shower valve installed. Of all the inner turmoil that I felt when demoing my master bathroom, installing the new valve and plumbing caused some of the most stress when I was remodeling. Like everything else, in this video, you'll see how I saved hundreds of dollars by prepping and installing this new valve set myself. My name is Ryan Andrews and it's my mission to help you build equity in your home by doing projects yourself. Check out the playlist in the card here. At the end of the video, I'll share a couple of takeaways you might find helpful. So hang out until then. Leave a comment with any questions or suggestions. Hammer that like button and let's get working. When you're getting started, it's important to lay out all the pieces in your kit to see what you're working with. I like to use my iPad and an app called Notability. And I bring in a picture of what my cell looks like so that I can lay out where I'm gonna place my valve, how I'm gonna run my hot and cold water, and how I'm gonna route my rain and my shower spout. It also gives me a great opportunity to count all the elbows and 45s I'm gonna need for the project so I can pick them up at the store. Here's my valve and my diverter. Valve diverter. I did get it in the same kit that I got off Amazon. I'll link it below. This one has an on off valves right here so you can shut the water on and off. This mud guard right here is going to show you where you need to finish this finish wall flush with this surface. Important. We want to do that. I'm going to take these cups off. We want to take the cartridges out of this thing before we go soldering anything in. We don't want to heat them up and melt them. That would be awful. Not in there very tight. Flame protector for inside the walls. The mount looks like it is tight to the brass there, not tight to the brass there. So, so I won't be going like this. Now I'm going to be using what I have available, which is this propane torch. This doesn't get nearly as hot as map gas, but propane torch does the deal. I use this entirely in my hall bath, got the job done. It does take a little bit longer to heat up the elements, but it will save a little bit of money. I'd rather stick with what I have. If it's gonna take me a little bit longer, I'm fine with it. You wanna do as much layout and soldering on your table before you go and install the valve. I'm using an old 20 inch piece of tile to protect my table. This looks really good. I'm going to burn it. Water soluble flux. Since it's been a while since I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a test piece here. I'm going to turn this on, you know, crank it off, and as it's going down, I'll grab it and then turn it back on as it catches. It still gets really hot. Now I couldn't get this top piece out, so I'm being kind of risky here and trying to heat up this brass, but it wouldn't ultimately go. It's getting that hot. I couldn't get this brass hot enough to do the solder really quick. So what happened is it started dispersing all that heat all around this whole element right here, putting in jeopardy our plastic piece that we couldn't get out to begin with. I'm still not going to get the map gas in the torch because that's 50, 60 bucks. I can get these for 280 a piece. Plus, that'll keep me from having to heat any of this element up. Even if it didn't get hot, I can't pull this plastic piece out. And when I tried it with this propane torch, it got dangerously hot and almost lost its form. But thankfully, it's still turning and clicking in there and not having a problem. Now I'm gonna let these cool off, so I don't wanna hit them with any wet rags or anything like that between expansion and contraction with heat that can compromise the seal underneath it. So I'm gonna wipe these down a little bit, clean them off just a little so I can take a look and make sure that I'm feeling good about the solder. T plus two, got this at the local hardware. This is pipe thread sealant. What you wanna look for is that it's formulated for potable water. I'm going to liberally apply this. 
on these pipe threads. What's important to realize is that it might not crank around as much as you want. So you want to mark the spot before you add any elbows. You want to make sure how far around these adapters are going to go. That's what's going in, and that will go up on top there. You can find this kit in the description below if you want to follow along with the exact same thing to make it easier in your project. I gotta put this back on so that I can define how far in to drill the hole in the side for this pipe and how far back I'm gonna to need to put the stud in to support this valve. My overflow is lined up directly with my drain. So I don't need to see the drain in order to line up my plumbing and my valve. I want my valve to be center right over the top of this overflow. That'll give me a nice even plumb line from the water faucet to the overflow to the drain. Put the line right on the center of my drain and we're square. That being the center of it, I know that this pipe is directly in the center. So I want it right on that center line right there. Boom. To the end of the mud guard is two and a quarter inches. I'm gonna take this two and a quarter inches and I'm gonna set this back an inch and a quarter. That leaves this out about an inch from the wall, which is where we want it. That's how it'll sit. See, I'm right atop of my line right there. One inch off of the mud guard. Now I'm gonna turn that water off, chop these down, put that block in, support the valve, enter in the hot and cold water, kick the water back on and rock and roll. Cause I'm gonna take these shark bites off, which are reusable by the way. When I turn the water off, I open up the hose, it tends to relieve all of the pressure downward away from the house so that there's nothing trickling back in here. The main water line, sometimes it just doesn't crank all the way off. Turning that exterior hose on allows that to drip out there instead of coming up and dripping through your pipes. If you have that drip through your pipes, you can't solder anything because it doesn't actually recede down and give you the room that you need to make the pipe hot enough to actually take the solder. These shark bite caps have these little tools you can get. And what they do, this is for a half inch and it wraps around the pipe. And when you pinch it, pull it up, it grabs that plastic piece, pushes it back up into the device allowing you to release the pressure that comes right off. This does from really small pipes, I'm cranking it down all the way up to 5 8 inch pipe. Dude. I just dropped this little thing down into the back side of that tub. Wouldn't have been able to get it out of there unless I had that access panel. All the old oxidation is off, and we got a nice clean surface to work with. Got my fire protector here. The water's turned off, so in order to douse it, now they say you don't have to douse it, but I put it in the water anyway. Water's turned off, so I just shoved it in the toilet. Just kidding. Use bottled water. This one doesn't have a stop, so I'm gonna make sure that it's right, roughly halfway there. Don't wanna forget that nearby in case I do all kinds of bad stuff. Torpedo level on this to make sure I'm accurately portraying where I need to go over and make a line on the bottom.
this flux is a million years old and it's changed colors, but it is working like a charm. Heat up the coupler or the elbow and 45, not the pipe itself, and from one side, and then just grab it from the other side and it sucks it all in. And this is gonna go relatively fast because this pipe's already hot. Hot and cold are hooked up now. It should get itself squared away to the block that I'm gonna put behind it. No hits to the back of the wall. I'm gonna use a little piece here. In order to keep it from throwing it off level, I'm going to pop something underneath to make sure it doesn't move. Now I can secure my valve down to the block. For that, I'm gonna go back to my deck screws. I wanna make sure that I'm on my center line, right there. Now I only need two there. I'm secure here, I'm just about an inch outside of my stud, which is where I want it to be. Half inch backer board, quarter inch or so of mortar, and then a quarter inch of tile. I'm going to put in this piece right here, right directly on my line, facing 90 degree out like this, so that I will leave a hole in the wall, and this will screw directly in, and it looks like That'll kick about two inches in over the tub, which I like. There still is a gap between the two. So when I put this in, this block right here, and I might have to manufacture a block, I'll probably just attach it right to the chipboard. center line. And now I can line up my shower head and my rainfall because wherever you put your valve is going to be a little bit different and then whatever you put your height of your shower head is going to be a little bit different depending on how tall you are. 41 inches. I decided not to follow the manufacturer design because I wanted my rainfall to be right in line with the shower. Let that cool off. Because of that, I had to get a couple other pieces that would go along with the system. And for that, you'll find those in the description below. Again, pipe thread sealant. I wanna make sure it's fully engaged in all of those threads. Give it a right on our center line. Boom. Can't tire that flint. Boom. Hit with the old cigar lighter. To push it against the back of the sheetrock, make sure it's flush. There we are. Rain hiding. This is nailed in with a couple of copper fasteners here so that it doesn't oxidize against any other metal that's on it. Square away. And I got my hole cut in here to access it. It looks like it's pretty sturdy. I'm going to countersink. Now we're on there. Now that I've got everything in place, this will give me a good opportunity to test my drain kit, to test the valve, 
and to make sure that everything is working right and there are no leaks in my plumbing. Now's the time to know if you got a leak, not after you have tile in. I thought this would be enough to secure it down, but clearly it is not. All right, I got that better secured up there. Pretty happy with that. Plumbing's looking good. Now I just gotta test the fittings, make sure everything works, no leaks in the plumbing. Some water coming somewhere. I just don't see it. Oh, there's water coming out right here. So I have a leak right here. It's coming off at the joint, which means that I probably either didn't seal it enough or didn't crank it down enough. There's water in this. That is why it's not getting hot enough to loose that up. So, that is no fun cutting out what you just put in. I clearly had some room for tightening that down and I'm pretty frustrated myself that I left that so loose. It's got more. It's got more. There we go. Go ahead and turn it on, half turn please. No water there, no water there, no water there, no water there. Everything seems to be dry. Let's try to turn this thing on now. All right, so that's the rain. Switch over to the tough stop, everything looks good. Switch over to the handheld. There it is, that's hot water. So we are in business. Everything's connected. Yeah, no leak. Two questions I have. One, will this thing hold water? And two, how's my drink kit doing? Let's hit the exit button on this thing and go check it. I hear it, it sounds good. No leaks anywhere. Super dry. Tested our plumbing, works, no leaks. Tested our drain kit, works, no leaks. Now we're on the backer board so we can get tile in the alcove and get ready to use this shower. It's my shower, you're, you're not gonna use it. I'm gonna use the shower, you're not invited. So fast forward to the tile going in here and you'll see that one inch out from the stud is exactly where we want that valve. It's nice and flush with the tile and it looks spectacular. You can totally do this project yourself. With a little preparation, pick the shower kit you like, or grab this one from the description below, and build your confidence as you add equity to your house. A couple of takeaways. Number one, listen to your intuition. As I was soldering the valve on the table, I realized that it was dangerously close to overheating the actual element inside the valve. So I switched to the threaded adapter. And if I would have kept going instead, it would have cost me the whole valve assembly, which would have meant a lot of money. We don't want to spend more money. Secondly, if you want to stray a bit from the original design of the product, do a little bit of preparation, like I did in Notability, and then see the route that you want. You're going to use the shower every day, well, most of us, and you want to be satisfied with the final layout. I knew I didn't want to drill holes in my new tile to hold the shower head on the right side of the wall as the design specified, so I installed it in the center and added a new neck. Find the link in the description below. Listen, I enjoyed this part of the master bathroom remodel. Check out the other videos in the playlist, and it's really helpful to get your feedback. So leave comments below, subscribe, click that bell to get notified, and choose the all option so you get notifications when I post something new. And share this with any other DIYers or homeowners you know. It's super helpful. It would be great to see that like stat hit triple digits. See you on the next video at Cool Hand Ryan.